now joined, I'm delighted to be joined, in fact, from Paris by Lena Ike Pinot, uh, Chief Sustainability and Quality Officer at JC Deco. A very warm welcome to you, Leniac. Um, uh, it's great to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. And just a quick reminder to our viewers that we do want to hear your questions, so do pop them in that Slido box. So let's get started. I've got quite a few questions I want to ask you. Um, you just started not that long ago at JC Deco as Chief Sustainability and Quality Officer, but prior to that, you were an advisor to brands on sustainability. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And what do you think makes a brand sustainable? Hi, Andrea. Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm delighted to be part of the AdNet Zero Summit. And for a brief introduction about myself, what is important to understand is that I build my career around my personal purpose, uh, which is rethink how we are used to doing business to deliver more value for stakeholders and at the end have a really positive impact on society. And as you said, um, after 10 years of marketing uh, among Danone and Lint, I joined EY, Ernst & Young, uh, where I help my marketing peers to embed sustainability into marketing practices, but also working with my corporate clients to define their mission and their CSR strategy. And it was a meaningful experience which has led me today to GC Deco as Chief Sustainability and Quality Officer. But um, enough talking about me, you're right. What is important is to understand how we can make our brand more sustainable. And when I used to work at EY, I had a framework based on five PRs, uh, which I think are very meaningful to understand what are the key points you need to address if you want to become more sustainable. So I suggest we, we can go through this. Um, the first pillar I would like uh, to discuss is that you need to define a clear purpose and integrate it into everything you do. And this means that your decision-making process should include not only financial criteria, but also non-financial ones to genuinely uh, embed your purpose. And let me change the slide because I would like to, to share with you a, a great example of a company who, who manage it. I think it's Tony Chocolonely. Uh, it's a chocolate brand with a very strong purpose, 100% uh, slave-free chocolate, not only within their company, but in the whole chocolate industry. This brings us to the next pillar, which is that uh, you need to have a sustainable offer. And today, sustainable brands are expected to offer products and services which reflect their purpose and should consequently communicate clearly on their performance. And uh, L'Oréal, I think, did this perfectly by first screening their entire product portfolio in order to address how sustainable their products are, which then stimulated innovation within the company and led them to start to communicate on the social and environmental impact of uh, their products. And the third step uh, into making your brand sustainable is that you have to carry out eco-friendly operation and supply chains. Up, I think this is good now. Um, and uh, this step is highly linked to the, to the previous one because if you want to offer sustainable products, you must also have a responsible and transparent supply chain. A great example of that is Everlane, a Californian uh, retailer which was launched in 2011 and which has built its reputation around a concept of radical transparency throughout its whole supply chain, meaning that the cost behind every aspect of its production process are shared with customers. Another very important pillar is that you have to deliver engaging communication. I think this is a very important subject today. Um, because today's global brands have the ability 
to drive mainstream consumer behavior change for good. So we have a great power, a power of influence to make responsible consumption uh, more attractive and attainable at scale. That is why you, we, we should raise awareness on CSR issues and we should share concrete advice on how to live a better life, a more responsible life that won't hurt the next generation. And I love this example. Uh, I think Patagonia is doing a great job and uh, I love this campaign. Don't buy this jacket. The company is famous for marketing one of the most durable and yet affordable clothing. And so this campaign suggests that you don't need to buy a new jacket, but take one, the one from your father or mother instead. So this, this is an example clearly on how you can use your campaign to have a, a positive impact. And finally, the last PR is that you should have a committed and transparent governance with a proactive and authentic communication. And um, uh, a good example of that would be Unilever. Uh, and I would like to quote uh, Helen Jope, the CEO of Unilever, who clearly explained that the two biggest challenges uh, that the world currently faces are climate change and social inequality. And he also said in 2018 that in the future, every Unilever brand will be a brand with purpose. And I think this is quite huge. And today, the seven brands with the highest turnover in Unilever, uh, meaning Dove, Knorr, Lipton, or what, any, all the other ones, are all in the sustainable living brands lineup, uh, meaning uh, taking action to support positive change for people and the planet. And this is a great success story because in 2018, the 28 sustainable living brands grew 69 person faster than the rest of Unilever business. And they also delivered 75% of Unilever overall growth. So we can understand through Unilever example that you really need a long-term commitment, but you will also get reward. And um, I think that we have a lot of initiatives to, to illustrate each PRs, but there are still a lot much more that we, we, we can do together to transform the brands. So Lini, if there is a brand that wants to become sustainable and wants to commit to it, what advice could you give them? This is a very good question. Um, I think in addition to the five PRs I just mentioned, uh, I can share uh, some actions that have proven to enhance the business performance of organization. The first action is that you need to define what is material. What are the most important issues for your stakeholders where you can have, as a brand, a real impact, a role to play to improve the situation? And among these CSR issues, because I'm sure there are many, just pick one. And then align your brand positioning and your communication campaign to this mission, this struggle, and this purpose. The second action consists in integrating sustainability into everything you do, into the business strategy, and align it to this purpose. And the third action is uh, to establish cross-functional teams and accountability to drive performance. And finally, if you have done all this action, it will be easier to innovate and create sustainable attributes for your offer that will turn to capture larger market share and address unmet stakeholder needs. I know that it might sound a little bit difficult. I can say that it takes uh, courage to be a sustainable leader, but you will be rewarded. Sustainability could well become one of your most effective competitive advantages. And I believe consumer follow and reward the brands will lead with more impactful product and experiences, more meaningful relationships, 
and uh, a more miserable action that helps them live um, better today and create a more sustainable future for all. And I recently read a very interesting study from Kantar that predicts that 40% of global households will become ecoactive in the next five years, reaching around uh, 50% in high GDP markets. I think ecoactive is quite transparent. It means that people uh, which are highly concerned about the environment. And according to Kantar's estimation, Purchases of consumer product by Ecoactive will represent a total of $925 billion by 2026. Such a huge market growing faster than the conventional one. So, more concretely, this means that brands that position themselves with a responsible offer today will be the ones that perform best tomorrow. Therefore, as I previously uh, um, it try to express responsible product is no longer a niche segment, but a very strategic growth area for brand now. But I think what is very important also to understand is that if the brands would like to seize this opportunity, brands will definitely need to rebuild trust with consumer because consumer, uh, there is a huge mistrust about the, the, the messages uh, shared by the brands and consumers don't expect brands to be perfect. They want to know about the things that are difficult and the themes that are uncomfortable. Um, I would say that brand vulnerability is very important to consumers now. And an increase in the communication message won't be enough. Therefore, to, to do this, brands really need to communicate about their positive impact on society and on the environment with concrete evidence to meet customers' expectations for more transparency. Okay, some great advice there, Lynn Ake. Thank you. Um, do you think that advertising can play a pivotal role in changing consumer behaviour? And, and how can out-of-home advertising uh, play a role in this too? Of course, otherwise I, I won't have joined GCEDECO. Uh, advertising has a crucial role in changing uh, consumer behavior. Um, it is important to note that the ecological transition around the world is based on uh, three inseparable, inseparable drivers. First, the production of sustainable goods. Then the access to these products for, um, and services for everyone and everywhere and then the communication of these offers to citizens. And this is where we have a, a role to play. And in that way, advertising is, uh, is here to bring life to, to this last step and through its positive narratives and its prescriptive power, advertising helps to build imagination and transform collective uses and representation. And out of home is clearly one of the best media to do this because we have the media of um, of everyday life in in the citizens it is the media of the street and of traveling it is popular close to people it is inclusive and accessible to all audiences and it is a free media so i think we we are in close proximity with uh, our our citizens and uh, it enables a collective promotion of responsible behavior we we definitely are promoting a lot of uh, sustainable products and messages and innovation which can help um, to bring alive a new model of consumption and, and, and development. And um, we, we provide insight to, to consumers to help them make the right choices. That's what we believe uh, at GC Deco. And uh, our media reaches more than 840 million people worldwide. We therefore have a real capacity to influence and above all, we have the responsibility to 
amplify the positive messages and the solutions that exist to encourage changes in behavior and um, to make each person an actor of positive change. And are there any particular initiatives or strategies there at JC Deku that, that you're undertaking or, or planning at the moment around sustainability? We we are doing a lot right now, and um, I think JC Deco is uh, most well known for its responsible innovation and sustainability. We invented the advertising bus shelter and the self-service bicycle team, and we have always worked to make everyday life easier uh, for everyone in the city. Maybe I can uh, uh, illustrate it with a very recent innovation we have done. Uh, it's a fil filtreo bus shelter. It purifies the air uh, using a plant-based frustration system. I think it's it's quite innovative and uh, it's it's very useful. And uh, in addition to that, we made the choice to commit to 100% renewable energy by 2022. And we are looking at how um, at corporate level and with all our market, we can better measure our emission and also reduce uh, them at maximum and how we can compensate our residual emissions. And actually... France will become the first uh, country to be carbon neutral within GC Deco by the end of uh, 2021. So we are doing a lot for our market, but I think as a leader worldwide, we also have a responsibility to work uh, for the transformation of the entire industry. That's why we have been working in the creation of a climate charter with uh, the UPE, which is the French Outdoor Advertising Union, in order to help the entire industry to commit to reduce the carbon uh, footprint of outdoor advertising, but also to promote more responsible communication, and last but not least, to really monitor and uh, work on the uh, real implementation of these commitments. And... Lily. And one one last point, and after uh, I, I, I let you rebound, because I think it is very inspiring. We also want to raise awareness about the campaign footprint, because I think it is uh, a very important uh, step if we want to have a huge impact on the advertising industry. That's why we have launched, uh, in, we will launch in the coming week, a unique calculator that will measure the environmental, social and economic impacts of all the campaign for uh, our advertising customers. And it will be launched in France and we will deploy it after world, uh, worldwide. Sounds exciting. Lilique, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We really do appreciate your expertise and of course your time. Thank you.